Hunter x Hunter episode 84, AX Faded X Awakening. Yeah, and that's probably gonna spread a lot. Or is it the king? I mean, it was mostly Kai. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, the royal guards. I think I know what they look like. One of them is a butterfly. Opening spoilers. You need to see what the ants have done to this beautiful country that was NGL. Paradise Lost. <laughs> they just they're happy to see good work. This guy got smushed. Yes, the hard object was gone. To the NGL's credit, like, they really did preserve nature. Like, every animal was here. Every animal. The biodiversity just off the charts. Gone still pissed off. He's activated. Again. Right, that direct head on, like, we're gonna overwhelm you, overwhelm you with force. And fight you one by one thing. Only gonna happen once. These are some pretty smart sentient ants. These, the insect colony, definitely anti-fragile for more than one reason. One is that numbers really don't matter. They, they just can make an army instantly, pretty much. And with every section that the three defeat, they get smarter to their capabilities and in the ways that they approach them. And then also, something I never thought about with Nen, if you attack someone with Nen and don't kill them, you risk them like learning Nen, which is terrible. <laughs> Kite has a lot on his shoulders, man. I feel like electricity would be great for the- Yeah, there you go. What?! That might be what they want. Yeah, yeah. This girl's animal inspiration was anime cat girl. Oh damn, this, this cat girl just responsible for this lion's death through ego. He did not give in to the female peer pressure. Impressive. <laughs> Damn, they're even like keeping a numerical database. Optimistically, I want to believe he escaped. Oh, these skulls just sitting there in the background. And skulls. Right, yeah. Skulls. <laughs> yes, he's alive. I was hoping, I'm still hoping, not convinced. I don't want him just to be queen fodder. Oh, we just got really ambitious. This society could fall apart. Humanity might actually be its undoing, just through sheer DNA. Oh? Who are you? What? Someone just dropped in. Is it one of the guard? Pretty sweet introduction. Do we get another bad roll? Oh, what the heck? Okay, yeah. Another tree live lost. Starting to seem a little bit overpowered. I didn't want it anyway. Oh no, we're getting... I was about to joke, was this tragic backstory time? For emo lion? He has his lion memories. It's interesting they all have memories of their own death, to some extent. It's a really unique position. This stare down, though. 
These last couple episodes have been so atmospheric. The attention to detail is great. I think most people are familiar with the idea of meditating on death as a way to bring perspective to one's life. I think to a lesser extent, but something also interesting to think about in a similar vein is the fact that while we sort of take our power in the world or our ability to be safe in the world for granted, the reality is at any point in time, if those stronger than us or a group of people that outnumbered us wanted to end our relative peace, they could. I don't like the idea of living one's life in a state of paradise paranoia. But there is something cool, I think, about feeling that at certain moments, going deep into like the capacity of the world to be dog eat dog. And also useful, I think, just as a tool of understanding risk as a method of motivating preparation. Again, I don't like paranoia. I don't like being overly conspiratorial and doom and gloom about the world. It's tricky because there's a lot of conspiratorial thinking. There's a lot of doom and gloom thinking that most of the time turns out to be dead wrong. But like sometimes it turns out to be right. You know, there are examples in history of society absolutely collapsing for the most unlucky element of that society. I I think just being aware, being vigilant, not taking anything for granted, and also like being grateful that there are actually structures in place, that there are enough people that don't want to see things like that happen, that it doesn't happen, because it easily could be. <laughs> Going into the nest is, is kind of wild, but the time thing, right? Yeah, it's kind of now or never. Who are you? What are you? She's one of them. She's one of the three. Royal Guard just plopped out of the egg into Ram Ramit's life to ruin his world. Just born with this energy? Just born with the Nen? Just wild looking. Imagine just being like born like this, like you're just born like a full mental, human mental cognition and power. That was a short arc. <laughs> nah, he just, yeah, he just, <laughs> he just realized, he just gave up how foolish I was. You don't have the talent, not a genius. Sorry. This thing that's 30 seconds old is better than you. That's the pain of DNA. It's also kind of a loser's mindset. Good boy. <laughs> that was a great image. Yeah, I don't really care about Ramit's feelings, though. Yes, master. She's also a cat girl. Like, she's more of a cat girl. How many cat anime girls did the queen eat? But maybe love is... <laughs> Wow, wow, that conversion though. I just really fell into his role. That's domination. Now oh, Peggy shook. He's gonna have a similar, similar thought process to ram it. This thing is born into this? After everything I did, I did the hunter exam. Once the, you know, he gets over the initial fear. Oh my god. That sensing ability. Yeah, I was gonna say run, but I don't know. At that point. Imagine you're at work and like you have a pregnant coworker and she gives birth in the office and then that baby starts giving you orders. <laughs> That's kind of what this is. And you realize that all of your life is nothing compared to this five second old infant who's just better than you in every way that you ever valued anything. And that it is your obligation to serve it forever. And that that is the greatest purpose you ever could have wished for. Modern day Ramit story. It was foolish of me to hope he would make it out of this alive. Mm. Unscathed. Yeah, oh god, she reminds me of that uh, the maid from Steins Gate. And there's two more of these these things coming. Please stop. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a peek into your cerebral cortex real quick. <laughs> Yeah, she's terrifying. She's got all this power, but has like that child, childish playfulness and curiosity. Oh, he's talking? I mean, I can't say I blame him or could do better, but... Oh, I don't want him to be like... I don't want his legacy to be just being an agent for the ant army. Oh, she's... Con wow, she's like... She read a book and she figured out Neuralink. At least he's not a traitor. Still a very sad fate, though. Never would have guessed in the Hunter exam arc. Does she blink? 
please blink and please stop doing that. <laughs> and that's how the Chimera Ant Army learned Nen or Water Divination. But was the stripping necessary? She's like, you need to be naked for this. The only silver lining in this is I feel like Colt will become an ally at some point. Yeah, everyone's gonna get that. Those that survive. The hell is that? Just death type? Specialist. Come again? Oh. I'm probably gonna call her cat girl. Oh. Quick! Uh, stitch your brain together and get, wake up and get out of there. Damn it. Get your clothes on too while you're at it. Yeah, you don't say. Yes, it does. I love how the narrator is just like... The narrator himself has become depressed. He's starting to lose hope. And I think that as crazy as this introduction is, there are still two more of her, like I said. And also the king, who you presume will be a lot stronger. It's starting to feel like without the Chimera army joining Conan Kloa's side, or something like that, they have no chance. But then again, you know, Netero. Who knows, man? It's just, there's so much crazy craziness in this arc. and just so many dangers and allies in so many different directions. I know this probably doesn't warrant a long rant, but I do think it's interesting in this episode that there was kind of a, a theme being explored, I guess, from both Ramit and the emo lion about being the best and one's place in the world and wanting to be the best or you know in this case the, the strongest the material nature of one's birth you know D dna it can be cruel right it can be a brutal thing though i think over focusing on that and reading into it as a potential death sentence for one's own dreams or satisfaction is, is a trap it's a mistake i think it goes wrong quite often because people are kind of tunnel vision about the way they define what success means to them and also like wrong about what will bring them satisfaction people desire the heights of a lot of things but you can always kind of zoom out and ask yourself what is the goal behind the goal I like increasingly think the most zoomed out level are very, very fundamental and attainable things for just about everyone, given just a, a certain minimum of functionality in, in life. And those are going to be uh, assurance of safety, basic minimums across the, the various needs of life. The ability to deliberately and intentionally utilize one's own thinking and, and gifts and what have you as leverage on the world to affect desired change. The more confident you are in your own ability, the more assured you are that you can get what you need when you need it, the happier and more satisfied you'll probably be regardless of your current circumstance. In fact, an example of what I just said, while a lot of people make like being number one or being the richest the goal, generally people are the happiest where they hit the, the point of decreasing marginal utility when they get to the financial financial level where they have no concerns. Beyond that can be fun for various reasons, but you'll never climb as quickly in satisfaction dollar to dollar as you will reaching that point of like, you're just financially healthy. You don't have to worry about being able to afford your necessities. In fact, I think a lot of times the, the desire for more money is a deficiency of its own. It's a deficiency in one's perception of esteem from others in society or maybe like romantic interests. It's a fear again, that one won't be able to get what they need without having excess money, etc., etc. For people like the, the emo lion, let's say, it's a very overly specific criteria for judging oneself and one's life. I guess we sort of saw the solution in a very bizarre way with Ramit, who like having felt raw power and like recognizing and accepting his place, realized that he would be just as happy if not happier, just being his best self and playing his role the best he could, which would be supporting Nosferatu anime cat girl. I think I probably talked about this a lot by now. I just think it's such a cool idea and, and like to try to make it as specific and actionable as possible. I think it's the mental solution to what are otherwise unfair elements of life, the things that are uncontrollable. It's like, yeah, okay, you, maybe you had a specific dream and maybe your natural attributes you were born with were not the most conducive to that dream, but like the dream isn't the actual goal. It's what you thought would be the best method to the goal. It's one thing you identified with a little bit more of a zoomed out focus. Realizing what you really want is feeling like you have control, you can start building that in, in like any number of ways. And suddenly all the power is back in your hands. And I think that it turns out the thing that you want is way closer than it appears. It's like minimums in every category, which are achievable for everyone, you know, like basic survival, basic social structure, basic romantic availability. And then it's like self-respect, you know, which you can build, maybe not entirely, almost entirely, maybe entirely outcome independent and like much, much more personal track record, personal proof, personal endeavor related, which is like amazing news, I think.